<sighs> which is, I don't know why I keep saying, which is a bunch of, uh, that were, that were English. Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I am here with my September wrap-up video. I read a total of five books this month. I know, going from like 22 books down to five books is a big jump, but university started this month and I've been very busy with readings and assignments. I haven't really done a lot of reading, to be honest, and I'm pretty sure all the books that I did read are from before I left for university. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read this September is Winter by Marissa Meyer. This is the fourth book in the Lunar Chronicles. I can officially say I have finished the Lunar Chronicles, yes, other than the like novellas, but I'm not counting them, so shh. I finished the Lunar Chronicles, guys. I ended up giving this a 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I absolutely loved this book. Winter was my favorite character. She's insane. She's so crazy, and I know a lot of people find her annoying, but I absolutely loved her. I also really loved how Aiko had a much bigger role in this book than the past three books. Because she is my other favorite character, her and Winter just by far amazing. And I'm so sad that the series is over. I really don't want it to be because I enjoyed it so, so much. The second book that I read this month is Burned by Ellen Hopkins, and I also gave this book a five out of five stars. It's just like, oh my gosh, guys, it was so good. This is my third Ellen Hopkins book. I don't know if I like this one or Identical better. I honestly cannot decide. They're both so different, but so awesome. This book follows Peyton Von Stratton, and she has grown up in a very religious but very abusive household. Her father catches her in a very compromising position with a boy. She is sent off to live with her aunt in Nevada, and this is where she meets a boy named Ethan. Ethan makes her start to question everything she thought that she believed in. I absolutely love the way Ellen Hopkins writes. She writes in verse. And sometimes the verses kind of form pictures, which I think is very interesting and I really enjoy it. I could not put this book down. I read it in one sitting. I loved it so much. I needed to know what happened next. And I really, really liked the little like foreshadowing things that Ellen Hopkins threw in there from time to time. You didn't know at the time, but after you were reading it and the big event happened, you were like, oh my god, like I should have seen that coming. Like it was so obvious with what she said. And it was just so cool to read. I think that Peyton was such an amazing character. I loved how she began to stand up for the things that she believed in. I really like how she developed as a character as a whole. And I also really liked Ethan, and I think he was so sweet and caring towards Peyton, which is exactly what she needed after everything she went through in her home life. I really enjoyed Peyton and Ethan together, although it was insane insta-love. And we all know, I don't like insta-love. Just something about them together just worked so well, and I just really enjoyed their relationship. I really enjoyed Peyton's Aunt Jay. I thought she was an amazing character. She was such a great role model for Peyton. And just everything about her was just so perfectly done. And honestly, I would love to have a family member like her because she's just, ugh, I loved her. I despise Peyton's father. Which I know is the point, but anytime he was mentioned, I was just like, no, I hate you. And I also really didn't like how Peyton's mom would not stand up for herself. Obviously, easier said than done, but I just wanted to like shake her and be like, girl, you deserve better. I just, <sighs> The ending of this book absolutely killed me. I need to know what happens next. I know there's a sequel, I just have to find it, but it, 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 uh, it was so unexpected and so abrupt and it just came out of nowhere and I just, I need to know what happens. I just, uh. The next book I read this month is Monument 14 by Emmy LeBourne and I ended up giving this book a two up to five stars on Goodreads. This book follows 14 kids who end up being trapped inside a Greenway Superstore after the world is forced into chaos. A volcano erupts which causes multiple disasters to occur around the world. The book definitely has a Lord of the Flies vibe to it. Although I did like Lord of the Flies a lot more than I liked Monument 14. There's a lot of battle for superiority and ranking inside the Superstore. The plotline seemed a bit far-fetched and ridiculous at times. It was set in 2024, so it's only a few years from now. I don't know when it was published, but I don't think it was that long ago. So some of the things that happened, it was like, really, this is, this is too much. This is too much. And apparently it doesn't have a copyright page, so, you know, we don't know when it was published. Sorry, guys. The writing style became quickly annoying to me as it was very repetitive. I think I was told six times at one point that the bus was on its side. It's like, okay, thank you. It was told to me three lines ago that the bus was on its side, but now three lines later, thank you for letting me know it's still on its side, you know, because I thought that a bus could flip itself back onto its wheels, you know, by itself, whatever. I found all of the characters annoying and just I didn't connect with any of them and it just, this book was not for me. 
The fourth book that I read this month is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, and I ended up giving this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Cather has been writing fanfiction for Simon Snow for about two years now, and she has quite the following online. When Kath starts college this year, she has always assumed that she is going to be sharing a room with her twin sister, Ren. But when Ren decides that she doesn't actually want to share a room with Kath, her social anxiety skyrockets and she hides behind her laptop and her alter ego, Magikath. When she meets her roommate, Reagan, she quickly discovers that she is a package deal with a very cute boy named Levi. As the school year progresses, Kath realizes that she is able to open up to new experiences and she may even find love along the way. I loved this story. I think that all the characters were so well-rounded and just so lovable. I loved the cute and fluffy parts of the story regarding Kath and Levi's relationship, but I also really liked the darker, more deep moments of the book with everything else going on. I loved Levi's character because he actually had flaws. Which you know, never happens in YA stories. It's usually the boy is just so perfect. Levi was just the right amount of charming without being overly annoying, and I just really loved him as a character. And honestly, I wish I had a boy like him because he's just so cute. I loved how he was always telling Kath how he was feeling, and he wasn't afraid to show her what he thought of her and how much he cared for her. Like, can I please have a boy like that in my life? That would be wonderful. I also really loved Reagan way too much. She is so funny and sarcastic. And I think that we would be great friends if we were able to meet in real life. I only ended up giving the book a 4.5 out of 5 instead of a 5 because of the fanfiction parts of the book. Which obviously is a very big part of this book, but fanfiction has never really been my thing, so I found myself skimming it for most of the book. I just didn't really have an interest in it, so that's why I lowered the rating. The fifth and final book that I read for the month of September is actually part of Booktube Tours, which is run by Grace over at Loving Them Books. Basically, we are given free books in exchange for our honest review. The book is Dark Horses by Cecily von Zygersar. I'm still gonna say that name wrong every time. But she is the author of Gossip Girl. I never read Gossip Girl, so I'm not 100% sure how similar the books are in writing style or anything like that. But I really did enjoy this book. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. If you guys are interested in, like, my full spoiler-free thoughts, I have a review up of it. You can click it, whatever side it is. I don't know still because I'm a terrible booktuber. But, you know, pick a side, any side, whichever one it's on. Also, if you're interested, there's a link down below to win this book for a giveaway. So, you know, go check it out if you're interested. Alright guys, so those were the five books that I read this month. I think I originally said I wanted to read seven books. I can't remember. I know that I said I was going to read Clockwork Princess and City of Fallen Angels, which, you know, didn't happen because they're monster books and I had schoolwork, so. Sorry, maybe next month. Probably not, because realistically I'm probably not going to read. Am I going to put up a TBR video? Heck yes, I am. I will see you all in my next video. Good bye.